Good day, everyone. My name is Kelly Parker. I work jointly for the Virginia Department of Health and the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association as an intern for the Hospital Preparedness Program. Since you all are from across the state, I'm going to cover an overview of the Hospital Preparedness Program, look at our statewide HPP perspective, I'll describe the healthcare coalitions throughout the state, and then how you as pharmacists can play a role within the coalitions. The Hospital Preparedness Program, or HPP, is a federally funded program that is managed by the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, which we refer to as ASPR. The goal of the HPP program is to support state and local governments and healthcare coalitions to identify gaps in preparedness, to develop plans to build and sustain the eight healthcare capabilities that you see listed here, and to build community resilience and resilient healthcare systems in the event of a disaster. Now, although the program is called Hospital Preparedness Program, our healthcare coalitions cannot be successful without engaging critical community partners. These partners include emergency management, public health, long term care facilities, mental and behavioral health partners, pharmacists like yourself, and many others. The capabilities listed here provide healthcare coalitions and those participating in the HPP program the ability to develop a course of action. The first capability is health system preparedness, which encompasses the steps for planning, training, exercising, and evaluating activities to ensure an effective coordination during a response. The second one is health systems recovery, which provides the means to develop short and long-term efforts for rebuilding after a disaster and for future sustainability and resiliency. The third capability is emergency operations coordination, which helps response planning that provides rapid, disciplined, and flexible response to an event. The next is fatality management, which is led by the state OCME and is a crucial part of planning and response in the event of a disaster. The fifth is information sharing, which is meant to provide reliable and quick and effective sharing between public and private entities, which enables a more quick and fluid response. Next, we have medical surge, which helps with the capability to rapidly expand the capacity of healthcare systems to provide triage and medical care. Next is responders and safety health, which identifies resources needed to ensure the safety of healthcare workers. And the eighth capability is volunteer management, which assists in the ability to provide volunteers to support incident management and augment incident operations. The Virginia Department of Health, in coordination with the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association, manage the HPP program for the state. As you can see here, the Commonwealth is comprised of six healthcare coalition regions. We have the Northern, Northwest, Eastern, Central, Near Southwest, and Far Southwest. Now, a unique aspect about Virginia's healthcare coalitions is how differently their hazard vulnerability is. As I'm sure you're all aware, Northern Virginia, which we like to refer to as the state of Northern Virginia, has a higher risk for man-made disasters than, let's say, the far southwest might. The eastern region is in constant threat of flooding and hurricanes, more so than the northwest. Now, this doesn't mean that each coalition only prepares for one type of threat, but a large aspect of coalition planning is knowing what threat you will most likely encounter, whether they be natural or man-made. Being located where we are, we are at risk for all types of weather events, snowstorms, hurricanes, tornadoes, floodings. We can add earthquakes to the mix, and as we saw in 2012, the derecho. We also plan for man-made disasters, such as terror threats, transportation accidents, facility utility fa failures, and many large social events that occur around the state. For example, not only do we plan to mitigate large disasters, but we also support the large social events such as the upcoming World Police and Fire Games in Fairfax, the UCI Road World Championship Bike Race, which will be in Richmond in September, and the National Park Service, who is commemorating the 150th anniversary of the surrender of Appomattox in Appomattox County. Here we have the capability to set up on-scene support as well as provide on-call support in the event of a mass casualty incident in one of those events. As you can see here, our coalitions are a Tier 2 organization, with Tier 1 being a healthcare facility or entity, and Tier 3 being the jurisdictional authority, whether that be the state or locality. Our healthcare coalitions do not have regulatory or jurisdictional authority and rely heavily on the established relationships between partners. 
Now, I might be biased because through my experiences thus far, I think Virginia has an absolutely wonderful program to work with. The individuals that we have working for our coalitions have done a great job at building and maintaining the relationships with their members within their community. With these relationships, our programs would not be nearly as strong as they are today. So now, where does your role as pharmacist play into our coalitions? You could help with essential medications and just-in-time inventories during an emergency. This could be on the large scale, like a mass casualty incident, or during the evacuation of a medical facility, where you have patients requiring medications potentially going to many other facilities. We need you as subject matter experts in your field to help facility and regional planning. We hope to work with commercial pharmacies who can obtain and distribute medications during a disaster. Here are a couple real-time examples of where pharmacists have played a role in our coalitions. Calls were held to address the IV fluid shortage due to manufacturers stopping productions, and most recently, a couple of our coalitions held calls to address the Tamiflu shortage from this season. As the next step, I encourage you to contact your healthcare coalition to see how you can become involved. Our coalitions are membership driven. We cannot meet community resiliency without all of partners being involved. Many of our coalitions have work groups to help address the planning needs of their community, as well as the overall capabilities of the program. If you become involved with your coalition, I encourage you to keep in touch. You might not be able to be 100% engaged, but you can stay connected and get involved when needed. Most importantly, our coalition members do not want to make assumptions on what it is you do and what our communities need to remain resilient in your area of expertise. To wrap up, here is some contact information for you if you are interested. My name and contact information is listed at the top. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Uh, depending on where you live or work within the state, these are the healthcare coordinators um, for the six coalitions that we have. So you can also reach out to them if you would like to get involved.